So we officially know everything there is to know about the new Egypt civilization coming to rise of kingdoms. But the question remains, should you switch and play as the Egypt civilization? what's going on guys cheers real quick i've had a couple of you guys message me especially over on instagram asking if i'm still partnered with gamer subs i am you do usually see the code flash across the screen throughout my videos but in case you miss that you get 10 percent off if you use code omni there will be a link in the description below partnerships with companies like gamer subs help make videos like this possible and also they have some caffeine free options like this melon here which is what i'm currently drinking and i can drink it at two in the morning and still go to bed and their shirts are pretty cool too what do you think all right let's get down to business okay we have the official information about the Egypt civilization you can see here this translation is kind of bad okay this was translated from the official rise of kingdoms uh, Vietnamese page I believe but that's okay because the uh, English version of the same video basically told us exactly what these stats are so we don't have to rely on the actual translation so what we know officially is that the Egypt civilization is going to give you a special archer unit which we already expected we also get five percent increased archer attack we also get five percent increased rally damage and we get an increase in research speed as well as building speed by 1.5 percent each so right away we're seeing a very similar trend as the Arabia civilization Arabia is basically just the cavalry version of this new Egypt civilization the question is you know should you be switching to Egypt based on the buffs that we already know and the answer is that it sort of depends okay and we can definitely narrow this down a little bit for you guys um the first question is are you going to be focusing on a specific troop type and in this instance if the answer is yes i'm going to be focusing on archers then you may want to switch to the egypt civilization and the way that you can decide if it's worth doing so or not is by taking a look at the other civilization options that you're going to have at your disposal there are now five civilizations that have an archer special unit so that's actually crazy okay obviously you have britain here which also gives you five percent archer attack you get five percent troop training speed which is really nice and allies ally garrison capacity by 20 percent that's basically useless okay next we have china china just gives you a cross the board three percent increased troop defense so that's not an archer specific thing you also get five percent action point recovery and five percent building speed then we have korea which gives you five percent archer defense okay so that is the same stat as china but you get more of it but it's only for archers then you get 15 percent hospital capacity which i think is really nice and three percent research speed which is cool and then finally we have the ottoman empire which gives you five percent archer health five percent troop march speed and five percent active skill damage now when we compare all of those things to egypt egypt uh, is going to fill a specific role okay five percent archer attack is not that great especially when you have like ottomans with health and korea with defense okay if you're going all in on archers as far as stats go those will give you a better troop stat than the five percent attack you get from egypt what makes egypt really interesting is that for new players you're going to get a nice buff to both building and research whereas before you had to decide do you want to pick korea do you want to pick china okay these are going these are civilizations that give you a buff to one or the other um but they don't give you both there was prior to this no civilization that gives you both in my opinion that buff is not that exciting because primarily uh if you're going to buff one of them then you know korea is just a better choice because you get a better stat for archers and you also get three percent research speed which later in the game when you're pushing for t5 you're gonna want research speed way more than you're going to want building speed and for most players the 15 percent hospital capacity is going to be more useful than the five percent rallied uh rally damage on Egypt so even as a brand new player Korea still seems to be a little bit of a better choice but where you do shine with Egypt is that the you get the five percent rally damage now that is actually huge five percent all damage for your rally is nuts so if you're a player that actually leads rallies that is a buff that is so good that you should consider switching to Egypt if you're going to be rallying with archers now should you pick between Egypt or Arabia for example because they both give you that same buff well the question is you know are you going to be rallying mostly with archers or mostly with calves now of course if you are rallying with infantry there is no civilization that gives you infantry bonuses as well as the five percent uh damage so do you have an infantry 
and a cavalry pair well then great pick arabia if you have a, a infantry and an archer pair for rallies well you may actually want to switch to egypt that's a really good strategy having an extra five percent damage now the next question becomes how does that compare with ottoman because if you look at the stats that you get here with the ottoman empire it's actually really good the ottoman empire is so so good five percent archer health is way better than the archer attack 5% March speed is way better than the one and a half percent of research and building speed that you get with Egypt. Okay. And 5% skill damage. It's not as good as the 5% rally damage in rally scenarios, but in open field fighting, the rally damage on Egypt doesn't do anything. Whereas the 5% skill damage on, on, on Ottoman does help you in both rallies and in the open field. So that's sort of the decision you're going to have to make. Are you a player who's mostly focused on archers for the open field? If so, then Ottoman is going to be the way to go. But if you're an archer player who focuses on rallying, then I would say Egypt is probably the new best civilization for you. And that's really interesting I think you know a lot of players who are rallying with like Gilgamesh and stuff right now probably are going to be switching to Egypt and that's cool because this the design of these buildings I mean this it just looks sick guys I mean this just looks so sick I love it now of course if you're a free-to-play player or a brand new player to the game I would say that Germany is still going to be the best option for you because not only do you get the 10 percent action point recovery which is even better than China's five percent you also get five percent troop training speed which is nice and Teutonic Knights are pretty badass so Egypt is going to fill a very niche role but the fact that it does have a use is really nice unlike some of the other civilizations uh you know what I'm saying Japan you know I mean Japan is good for farming for farm accounts okay so I guess that's that's fine but whatever okay with that out of the way let's talk about the skills on the new commanders coming to the game because these are really good commanders for commanders that are coming in presumably the silver and gold keys now we technically did not get any clarification from the announcement video as to how we're going to be obtaining these commanders but as an epic commander for Imadip, uh then this obviously is going to be in in the silver and gold keys um if we take a look at uh Utmos the third this we don't know I mean I'm assuming he's going to be in gold keys but that means that gold keys are going to have more archer commanders than any other troop type commander which is really interesting that might make it more worth it to pick archers for free to play players in the early game something to think about okay now we do know that there's going to be an event where you're going to guaranteed get this new commander at least by day seven of the event you're probably going to have to log in every single day without missing a day to get that 10 sculpture unlocked but the fact that you get this commander at least unlocked for free guaranteed for free to play players and everybody else that's really really good and if you're a low spender that means that hey you're gonna get that five dollar pop-up bundle for the 10 gold heads so that's uh that's always pog champ you also get a free sieve change right here which is very very good that's I mean you know this is gonna make your decision that much easier do you want Egypt well if you do great news you can switch right now for free on day two that's awesome but anyway let's get back to the uh the commander skills here okay Imadip, his first skill, his active skill, says with a rage requirement of a thousand, he's going to apply a debuff to up to five targets in a radius for three seconds, increasing the damage that they take by 30%. Also, uh, when he is expertise and a secondary commander, the target that you're hitting is going to suffer a 50 rage decrease per second for the next three seconds. That is extremely good for an epic commander obviously the rage reduction is only for a single target but that's still 150 rage over the three seconds that they're going to be losing and taking 30 percent more damage that's like literally the same debuff as Richard the first okay you're basically getting part of Richard for free as a free to play player now obviously he doesn't have the healing factor but I mean hey like it, it is what it is this is one of the best active skills on any epic commander in the game very good stuff here second skill 15% attack and 15% defense for archers solid stuff okay a lot of other epic commanders in the game only give you 30% of stats when they're expertise like Kusunoki for example he gives you 30% the same thing as Imadip but it actually is his expertise this is just straight up 30% uh, which is really really nice you're not wasting your expertise on that his third skill is for garrisons you get you get 7% extra health for your garrison 
uh when you're in your city so this doesn't apply to flags or anything like that not that you would really use an epic in the, in a flag defense but that's sort of good okay health is obviously really good and the fact that it applies to all your units instead of just archers is really nice and somebody you might consider very early game as a secondary on your wall his fourth skill says when this commander's army is attacked there's a 10 percent chance uh, to inflict a debuff on the target that lasts for three seconds that reduces the skill damage that they deal by 15 percent there's a five second cooldown so there's a lot of debuffing going on here with this epic commander okay which is really good you're making them take 30 percent more damage you're making them lose 150 rage and there's a 10 percent chance that they're also going to deal 15 percent less skill damage to you as well which is really really nice now his expertise is of course the part that buffs the uh damage they take to, from 20 to 30 and gives you the extra rage debuff overall this is definitely one of the best epic commanders in the game and probably is better than bjorn now the thing about bjorn is he actually deals a little bit of damage with his active skill but overall i feel like the debuffs on this guy are just better i mean oh my god I, like i know it's not like game breaking or anything but again like early game he's going to be used all the time in archer marches and free to play players are probably going to use him in canyon for a while in the back row right i mean you could do like ysg primary and him secondary throw him in the back row i mean that would be solid of course ethelflaed is probably better but either way i'm spitballing here but i think that this is a very good epic commander now let's take a look at Thutmos the third okay now he has a aoe which we love that okay aoe is great in the open field a thousand damage factor hits only three targets 15 percent reduction per target and um the target will uh lose 30 percent healing ability for five seconds so this is interesting okay the the damage factor here is not that great now if we assume he's a gold key commander even comparing him to other gold key commanders that do aoe like Mehmed, for example Mehmed deals more damage and hits five targets now obviously his aoe is a very small uh, cone so perhaps Thutmose is like a half circle and that would compensate for the fact that the damage is lower we'll have to see i don't think it'll be a half circle there's no indication here that it will be it'll probably be the standard aoe amount or maybe even Mehmed if they really want to troll him um this is again if a gold key commander is going to be another way to counter richard in the early game and i i really don't know it like obviously they released ragnar last year and ragnar also had the healing effect reduction um and i just don't know how many counters we need for richard in the early game like is he really that broken in kvk1 i i i don't know um it seems like they're doing richard dirty here by just constantly pumping out ways to defeat him for free like literally gold key commanders are beating him now i have no idea plus this is archers which literally counters richard's infantry but regardless free aoe that's how i'm looking at this okay it's free aoe and again you know you can look at el Cid, who is basically the he's the other um he's the other archer that you're gonna get from the gold keys okay and this is just a thousand damage factor and a one second debuff now that's a strong one second debuff but it's only one target for a thousand so this is definitely a better active skill than el Cid, for my opinion right you're just dealing more damage which is nice but at the end of the day like I, I don't know it's it's I would say probably on par with the other gold key uh active skills maybe slightly better just because AoE is just better in general than everything but regardless let's move on here second skill you get 15 percent archer attack 10 percent March speed and you deal 15 percent more damage outside of Alliance territory so that's actually really good that's all damage okay your your entire damage is increased by 15 percent outside of Alliance territory which if you're rallying in the early game with this commander you're going to be outside your territory you're going to be on, a, on enemy territory okay so that actually might compensate a little bit I'm trying to adjust my chair apparently I'm all the way up okay whatever that you know sort of compensates for the fact that his skill damage is a little bit lower right I mean that boosts your skill damage by 15 percent as well you can sort of think of it that way but it's even better because it's all your damage so realistically that puts this more on par with Mehmed's active skill but it again it's only through targets and it has to be an enemy territory so there's some there's some things going on there um also Mehmed gives you 20 percent attack and that's for all troop types uh whereas this only gives you 15 percent and it's only for archers so I don't know yes the march speed is very good I in my kvk that I'm in right now dude my Nebu keeps getting caught in the open field because he's just so slow 
he's just so slow with my YSG so the March speed is is really greatly appreciated I even have a talented flag on my Nebu and he's still he's still slow but anyway now I would say that this skill is okay I would say it's comparable to Ahmed maybe a little bit better especially if you're in the enemy territory but worse if you're not in enemy territory so it sort of balances it itself out now the third skill says that the archers gain 10 percent defense while on the map which is really good when you look at the second skill it feels like there's a little bit to be desired as uh, you know from like a from a stats perspective so you kind of get that here as long as you're on the map which is nice and it looks like every time you attack there's a 10 percent chance to debuff the target and make them take 15 percent extra skill damage for three seconds with an eight second cooldown that's a really long cooldown for a debuff that is uh i mean it's good but like imana only has a five second cooldown for basically the same thing so like what's going on there last skill it says troops led by this commander take 10 percent less counter attack damage across the board good stuff we like to see it when attacked there's a 10 percent chance to deal skill damage to the target with a damage factor of 700 so again this is very reminiscent of El Cid now the thing about El Cid is that it's when he is attacking and the damage factors higher so here's the thing right this says it has no cooldown this you have to be getting attacked and it deals less damage and it does have a cooldown so it's not even like when you get swarmed this will help you because there's a cooldown so I'm really not sure how I feel about this overall I think this guy is definitely better than El Cid in general so maybe that's why they made this slightly weaker also 10 percent uh less counterattack damage is just really nice that's sort of like having two Delane's amulets on your commander for free and finally let's take a look at the expertise okay this says after casting an active skill this commander deals 30 percent more normal attack damage for three seconds there is an eight second cooldown now the, you know every time you activate the active skill does the cooldown start when it's activated or does it start after the buff is over because if you cast your active skill then you wait three seconds and then there's an eight second cooldown well you're gonna miss it for your next cast so it's only gonna be every other skill down or skill shot cast that you get this buff if it start if the cooldown starts the turn that it activates then I would say you'll probably get this every skill cycle regardless uh, unless you have like an insane rage engine on here but I don't know either way 30 percent more normal attack damage is is nice stuff there that's actually really nice stuff on top of the fact that you're getting 15 percent more damage just all damage outside of the Alliance territory uh he's gonna be a monster in the early game if we're looking at a gold key commander here that is for sure he's definitely one of the best gold key commanders in the game especially when you consider the fact that he's probably going to get a relic I mean when relics came into the game they just gave Ragnar a relic straight up like right away uh and that's really cool I feel like we're gonna see a relic for Thutmose if he is a gold key commander which I have no reason at this point to believe that he won't be like I, I don't why why wouldn't he be right I hope he's in the metal store instead but you know hey what do I know but yeah if we get a relic for Thutmose the third um he might actually be the best gold key commander other than Charles Martel obviously Charles Martel is is a really solid uh and he has a really nice relic as well Mehmed is also very good with his relic I've been seeing a ton of Mehmed even in season of conquest right now uh people are using C legendary CPO primary with Mehmed secondary with the relic Ooh, that is a nasty combination so Mehmed still very very strong but yeah uh, Thutmose definitely could be uh vying for that number one spot from the gold keys if he actually gets a really solid relic I would like to see some archer health on that relic 20 percent archer health and maybe five percent ten percent skill damage would be a very good relic for him that would keep him relevant for a long time and possibly a, qu a quite a good early game investment but if he's gold keys you probably still don't want to use your universals on him even though this will further dilute the gold key prize pool even further which is why I've been saying for so long that they need to stop adding commanders to the gold keys because we've already got plenty now they did reveal two new city skins the golden eye skin looks sick dude it looks sick however it actually debuffs archers which is like weird like you're releasing an Egyptian thing for the Egyptian civilization and it actually hurts archers pretty significantly because health is like a big deal so I don't know what 
I don't know why that's so counterintuitive, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, 5% cab defense is solid stuff if you don't plan on using archers at all. We also saw the next Zenith skin here, Supreme Warrior. Um, not really, not really a fan of this. The skin looks sick, okay. I think the Atlanta skin probably is a little bit cooler. Uh, but the fact that you got these like legionnaire soldiers on the side is really badass. But infantry attack ah no that's not it boys that is not it i feel like people are not going to be fighting very hard for this one in my opinion um you're losing archer attack cav defense and, and like yeah i don't know the atlanta skin is just better it's 10 percent health that's just way better than this so i don't know if you just want a zenith of power skin then this might be a relatively easy one to fight for who knows all right guys with that being said i want to hear from you in the comment section below are you going to be switching to egypt should i start an account as the egypt civilization when it comes out just for fun maybe on a live stream let me know in the comments section below while you're down there go ahead and drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton gets this video out into the algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it also subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace